Good evening and welcome to Shiloh. Let's stand to our feet and out and welcome the Holy Spirit to this place. Lift your voices. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice. Joy, my King, in what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I in so many ways and even in the midst of of all of the blessings of God that we see around us and about us 
we're sensitive to the fact tonight that there are many people that are hurting. and they need, they need the sovereignty of Almighty God to enter into the realm of their thinking, into the realm of their feeling and their emotions. But I am so grateful tonight that the God we serve is able. Amen. He is able to meet those needs as often and as much as we allow Him access to our hearts and our lives. Uh, much to be in praise about tonight, God has, uh, has done and continues to do. Uh, Miss Carolyn, we were praying about last Wednesday night, um, was responsive and uh, just really doctors wasn't giving her no hope whatsoever. And uh, tonight she's been moved out of intensive care and is out on the regular floor and making plans to come home. And uh, we thank God for that. Amen. And uh, just so many other requests. Continue to keep Brother Cliff and Sister Joe in your thoughts and your prayers. Uh, Sister LaRue, let's uh, remember her in our prayers tonight as well. And uh, uh, so many others. Uh, young man, um, my daughter taught in kindergarten, the little I think he's a 12, 13-year-old boy uh, that's battling leukemia. Remember him. He had a, um, he had a really scare today. They had uh, have assigned him some uh, treatment, and uh, during that treatment today, things went not well, and uh, his throat swelled up and uh, uh, reaction to, I think, the chemical going into him, and uh, they like to lost him today. But uh, let's remember his name is Justin. Let's remember Justin in our prayers tonight. But there's a mama. Um, the daddy of the home has, has died. And uh, so he is not, he, she doesn't have any help. And she has two other children. I know a, um, uh, I think a fourth grader, first grade and a fourth grader as well in the home. And she's a single parent. And so as of, uh, starting tomorrow, she's going to have to be going to Chapel Hill and back every single day till they can figure out a plan. So uh, I would just encourage you to call Justin's name in prayer. Church, God can change this situation. God can heal this boy. Uh, pray for this mom and that God would just give her strength. Their, their faith in the Lord is strong. Um, but you all know when you're in the midst of a battle lap. I heard a message preached last night about the smoke. And it was an interesting analogy that he used. And, and he gave the percentage. But the percentage of people that die because of the flames and the fire is so small in comparison to the people that die because of the smoke. You see, the smoke of life will blind us. The smoke of life will stifle us. We, we won't even be able to get our breath. I mean, we can, be staff, we can be snuffed out the very breath within us because of the smoke. Something that there's really no harm in. That smoke out there in the yard just lifts up in the air and it's gone. There's no weightiness to it. There's, there's nothing about it. But when it is confined on one individual in an enclosed place, then it can become overwhelming. So I want to ask you to remember this family tonight. And I just pray that God would intercede. Because we know that God is able to meet this need. Amen. And uh, I ask you to urgently take that before the Lord in prayer. Not just to pray here in this room. But take that home. Put it on your prayer list. Uh, Justin's that little boy's name. and Just intercede on their behalf. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. Maybe you have a request. You can just slip up that hand tonight. And God knows that need. Amen. And we're thankful that he does. And we're thankful that he's able to meet that need. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. We welcome those, Lord, that are joining us through iChurch, and we know their needs are as important as well. Though they were not in this room to lift up their hand right now, maybe they're just sending in that uh, into that chat box, remember me tonight. God, we intercede on their behalf because that need is important as well as any other need. The hands that went up in this room tonight and beyond those that have been mentioned here, God, it is unto thee tonight, Lord, because you are able. You're able tonight to meet these needs. 
And you're able to do it in a way, God, that will baffle mankind. You're able to do it exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond that that we could even think or imagine. So here's what I'm asking tonight. God, don't let my small thinking stop a big God. Don't let my small praying stop a big God tonight. Lord, you tell us that you've given us a measure of faith. I'm exercising my faith tonight in the sovereignty of Almighty God on behalf of this family. Not them alone, for all of the requests are important. But God, this touches our heart tonight because of this little boy. And we know, God, that you said, suffer the children to come unto me. God, we bring Justin into your presence tonight as an intercessor. And we believe you tonight, God, for the miracle. God, I know that you are able tonight to meet and supply every need, spoken and unspoken request. There are no limits with you, God, other than those that we place upon you. God, I give you glory and honor and praise here in this room, and we simply say thank you, Lord. You know the heart that is hurting tonight, and I just ask, God, that you would strengthen them and embrace them, God, right in the midst of your love. Do for them and through them tonight, God, that that they need so desperately. Father, we pause tonight and say thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, because I can call upon you in my time of need, and you said I am a very present help. For that help that is on the way now through our praying, God, we just simply say thank you, Lord. We receive it tonight. We receive it tonight, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Amen. Before you're seated tonight, just turn to that neighbor, throw up that hand, let them know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. It's good to be part of the family of God. Amen. And I'm glad to be a part of this family, and I'm glad you're a part of it tonight. Amen. Amen. We, uh, we say that to those that are joining us online as well tonight. We're glad you're a part of that family. Amen. And uh, we appreciate you being a part of this worship experience. I know all of you because I saw you toting in canned drinks tonight uh, heavily. Uh, so I know you already are aware of what is going to be taking place this weekend. Uh, Friday afternoon, uh, I'm assuming around 6 o'clock. Six o'clock, we're going to be assembling here at the church. Uh, I will have that trailer, boxed-in trailer again, and we can get everything loaded up on that and everything ready, all that we need to as much as we can. We've got to get the drinks iced down. There's, there's work to be done. Uh, the bags, I'm assuming, need to be put together, so there'll, there'll be something for you to do. Well, preacher, I'm not able to be off work by six o'clock and be here. Well, then just come on as soon as you can get here. They'll... Uh, We'll move you right into a spot when you get here, amen. But fri- uh, So we're going to be doing that on Friday night because we'll need to be over there on uh, Saturday morning. About daybreak is uh, about the norm, uh, and we're going to be setting up. Remember Saturday, if you are not playing in the tournament, uh, then we're going to need your help there. There will be plenty of work around that uh, golf course that needs to be tended to. Of course, there's uh, plenty of food that's going to need to be prepared and uh, those golfers will need to be waited on and looked after and loved on and fellowshiped with and told about Jesus. Hey, guys, let's don't forget why we're doing what we're doing. Amen. Amen. It, you know, it's, it's not just about going out there and having putting on a golf tournament and raising some money. Why are we doing what we're doing? We're doing it to build the kingdom. And we're always, always looking for one more. Amen. Why don't we just give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Just blesses my heart to see my brother able to walk in that door tonight. And we thank God for that. Amen. And, uh, but uh, we remind you on Saturday, come. There's a job for you. Amen. Maybe you would say, well, preacher, I can't hold out the work all day. You come and do what you can. If you can't do anything else but sit beside of a cooler and hand somebody a drink, there's something you can do. And uh, I know you will. And we say thank you in advance for that. It's a great day. It'll be a great day Saturday. Looks like God is shining His favor upon us with some beautiful weather, and we're excited about that, and uh, our plans are to raise the money. How much are we going to raise, preacher? Exactly what we need for next year because God already knows every person that is going to be called upon 
by us to bless. And he's going to supply the need. And we thank him for that. And I, I just applaud you guys for all that you do on an ongoing basis uh, concerning that. Let's worship the Lord together tonight as Nathan carries us to the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sunday, going to be dealing with, Lord, heal my anxious mind, part two of uh, peace of mind, 
the wisdom of mental health. I had uh, so many messages this week, text messages and messenger messages, um, so I know we are on target. Amen. But you know, once the myths have been uncovered, and you know and begin to understand the lies that the devil wants to blind you with, then there has to come a healing process. So this Sunday morning, we're going to begin to unpack that healing process on how God desires and wants to, and uh, I believe equip you with the necessary ingredients that can help bring about that healing uh, for your anxious mind, amen. So we just uh, encourage you uh, to come if you have uh, loved ones, family members, co-workers that you know are struggling in this area and you can get them here, I would encourage you to do so and give God an opportunity to move in their lives. But tonight, we're invited back to the table with Jesus. And uh, I just thank God because His Word has provided for us that He has prepared a table for us on the mountaintop. Yeah. But He directly says... I have prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And what blesses me about that is, as much as my enemy hates me and hates the God in me, there's absolutely nothing that he can do about what God is preparing for you and I. Other than convince us that we can't have it. You see, God has opened up a table. And he has given us an invitation. And there is a chair for Jesus. And there is a chair for you and I. To come to the table and sit down over the word of God. And begin to discuss the issues of life. You see God is not just a God that... um, declares over your life, he is interested in hearing from you repeatedly through the word of God. It is noted through his word. Ask that you might receive. Seek. You see, there's an interaction part there from you and I, the believer. At the table with Jesus, tonight our focus is going to be fully God, but fully man. You see, at the table tonight... We want to focus on the staggering reality that when we come to the table, we're sitting with Jesus. But not the fact that we're just sitting with Jesus, but we're sitting with Jesus who is both fully God and yet fully man. So we look tonight to Philippians chapter 2 verses uh, 7 and 8 and it said, Instead, he gave up His divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Jesus, who has invited us to sit at the table with him, took on every detail of humanity. I want that just to sink in for a minute. Because you see, a lot of times when we read God's Word, we run through the thought process of that so hurriedly, I'm afraid, oftentimes that we fail to comprehend or understand or even grasp, maybe is a better word, to grasp hold of the reality of what God is saying. The scripture said he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. So Jesus, who has invited us to sit with him, took that upon himself. I I like what the the writer said because you see, uh, Jesus, who has invited to sit at the table with him, he took on every detail of humanity. Listen. He took on every trial. He took on every heartache. Every time you've ever wept in the presence of God, Jesus had felt that. Just just grasp that for a minute tonight. 
He took on every heartache. Chris, every time you've wept in the last few weeks, Jesus has felt that same pain. He's walked through that process. And He's inviting us to sit down at the table knowing that even though He is fully God, He's fully man. He's tasted every trial you and I taste. He's felt every heartache that you and I feel. He has known every pain, every form of humanity, yet He did it without sin. And He is inviting us to come set with Him. You and I, me, in all my imperfections, the great I am, He is inviting me to a table to sit down in His presence and and I can walk. The Bible encourages me and, and informs me to an invitation to come boldly into the presence of a full God with the full authority and the full armor of God the Father and yet with the humanity of mankind. Every pain that I've ever had, every headache that you've ever had, Jesus has felt that pain. Every temptation that you have ever experienced, Jesus has felt that temptation. Every form of rejection and denial, Jesus has felt that. Isaiah 53 and 3 says it like this. He was despised and rejected. Listen to to this dialogue. A man of sorrows. Jesus. Fully man. But I want you to see this next word. Acquainted with deep this grief. I want you to focus on that word acquainted. Acquainted with deepest grief. We turn our backs on him and look the other way. He was despised and we did not care. That word acquainted, he understands it. He gets it. When we sit at the table, we're not at the table with one looking down on us in judgment, but one sitting at the other end of the table with us saying, I get it. I am acquainted with what you are going through. Oh, hallelujah. So whatever and however wretched I may be, however rejected I may feel, Whatever pain that I may be experiencing, whatever loss that I may be tasting, when I sat down here in the presence of my Savior, He is fully God. Now what that does is it qualifies Him uh, to be able to sit at that table with me in all of my iniquity, in all of my shame in all of my rejection, because He has been tarnished by that same. Fully acquainted. He is acquainted with every feeling that I have. He is acquainted with every emotion that I have. And yet He processed all that and did not sin through it. I I don't know how to wrap my mind around that that I am able to sit down in the presence of God the Father's only begotten Son who is fully qualified to meet every need. Oh, did you get that? He is fully qualified to meet every need that I can bring to this table because He's fully God sitting at the other end of this table. But He is also able to sit at this table with me And feel the pain of my hurt. To feel the rejection of where I am. To feel the suffering in my body. And it it hit me uh, this morning at, at my place of prayer before the sun ever come up today. It hit me when I sat down at this table as I was doing this morning in the presence of God with fully God but yet fully man. And I began to expose my heart before Him. The God side of Him, the God side of Him already knew, Ricky, what I was going to say. He already knew how I was feeling. He already knew the rejection of that pain. 
He already knew the hurt of that. He already knew the suffering of that. But being fully man, he could sympathize with that. You see, we as, we as Christian beings sometimes, I think we forget uh, that we don't have to be perfect. You hear me say this so many times, we're imperfect people striving to be like a perfect God. But somehow, some, somewhere in, in, in history, we bought a bill of goods that simply said, look, when you become a Christian, you put on a facade, and now no longer do you experience pain. No longer do you experience hurt. Hoss, I want to tell you something. You hit your hand with a hammer, it's going to hurt. Amen? And when Jesus hit his hand with a hammer, it hurt. So he knew, yet he lived through that and did not sin. I, I pray that we're that sanctified, amen, but not within ourselves, amen, because outside of Him, I don't exist. Outside of Him, there is no existence in me. You know, I remember so many times walking through uh, days of my life, Brother Stan, thinking to myself, well, God, I got this today. And, and, and all the while, a merciful God looked down upon me and said, Son, you ain't got nothing uh, because you don't got no breath unless I breathe it out into you. Unless I exhale it out of my being into your being for you to inhale it, amen. And then you exhale it back out into existence. But honey, I want to tell you tonight, you and I don't exist without Jesus Christ. Amen. I have no hope of coming and sitting down at this table because I'm going to tell you what it looked like. Go read the Old Testament. When God the Father sat down here, fully God... And I brought my shame to God. You know what God did? He killed me. You go read the book. Oh, hallelujah. I couldn't have come and sat down at the table with fully God. You know why? First off, because God said, I am God. No man sees me and lives. You can't even live in the presence of God. My Lord, how mercy. But when Jesus come, He humbled Himself. You know, God knew what it was going to take to bridge the gap between fallen man because He knew I was fallen and if I come into His presence without an invitation, so that's the reason why He made a way. He said, no man's going to come to me unless the Spirit draws him. Because if you just approach the great I am, amen, without an invitation, you're going to die. <laughs> but when Jesus came, He bridged the gap where you and I could come boldly to the throne room of grace, sit down with fully God, and be able to lay my petition out before Him being fully man. Being able to hear from God and know God. That word acquainted means he understands it, he gets it. So when we sit at the table, we're not at the table with one looking down on us in judgment, but one sitting at the table with us saying, I get it, I am acquainted with what you are going through. He didn't read about it, he didn't just see you in it, he says, I lived it, it is well fully acquainted with everything that you are. So we can sit at the table and be ourselves. I'm lost, Lord. I mean, there are just times I'm lost, God. I don't even know what to say. Aren't you glad for the holy God of heaven that provided a good Holy Ghost for you that will make groanings out of you when you don't have words to form? Amen. I thank God for the good Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. Amen. First off, because He gave me an invitation to come boldly to the throne room of grace. Amen. And I'm able to make that access way by the door. Jesus Christ is only begotten Son. Fully God, but yet fully man. He said, I get it. I'm acquainted with what you're going through. And He said, I'm acquainted because I didn't read about it. I didn't see it. I didn't even watch you go through it. He said, but I'm fully acquainted with it. So we can just sit at the table and be ourselves. I'm lost. I'm trapped. I'm feeling alone, I'm feeling defeated, I'm feeling overwhelmed, or we can say, I'm joyful, 
I'm excited. I'm so happy. We can express ourselves sitting at the table with Him because He's acquainted with all those feelings. Amen. You're not going to feel anything that He hadn't already felt. Amen. So tonight we say welcome to the table and let's talk about real life. But let's talk about it full of grace, full of love, but also fully acquainted. So when I come and I sit down at this table and I open up the Word of God, now now we all have our, our prayer language. We have our words that we speak to Him. Amen. And then also we have a heavenly language that we address Him in through and by the means of the Holy Spirit. But whatever the avenue is that I'm able to convey unto Him that that I am feeling Him being fully God, He is able to do something about my need. But Him being fully man, He is able to wrap Himself in that and embrace me in a way where He can meet that need. So tonight, when we begin to transition and we come to pray the Scripture, to pray the Word, we need to be reminded as we come to the table, (laughs) into the presence of the Lord, that we hear the voice of God. Hebrews 4, uh, 14 through 16 says, So then, since we have a high priest who has entered heaven... Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. The high priest of ours understands our weakness. Amen? For he faced all the same testings that we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Church, I just want to tell you tonight, that's why he opened up the table for you. And you see, I believe the reason why that he said, I prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemy is because he knew that's the place you were going to need him the most. Amen. I'm talking about an overwhelming peace that will roll right into a hospital room. Amen, brother? (laughs) An overwhelming peace that will come along beside of you standing at that hollow hole in the ground where you are about to place that loved one. I'm talking about an overwhelming peace in the wee hours of the morning when nobody else knows what's going on and you're wrestling and perplexed by the things of this world and he walks in and says, i got a table. Would you join me here? (laughs) Would you just come and sit down with me? And I just want to reiterate to you the importance of praying the Scriptures, guys, because I can speak to Him out of my language, and I can tell Him how I feel, and there's a time and a place for that. But guys, I want to tell you, I believe when we get hold of the heart of God is when we begin to expound upon what thus saith the Word of God. You know why? Because we're echoing what God has promised from the very beginning. Go back and read it. In the beginning was God and the Word was with Him. So when I speak that Word I go all the way back to where it began. (laughs) All the way back to the place where God only had me in His mind and in His heart. Before I had defiled any of those things that God had granted unto me by the wages of sin, I go back to the newness and the freshness. We were in revival last night with some friends of ours, and uh, uh, Justin kind of grew up in their household, and um, Stetson has uh, got Justin's Stetson cowboy hat, and he's been wearing it some. They had some pictures made of him wearing that hat. Well, Becky... Uh, she said, had told me at an anniversary dinner here a few weeks ago when she saw that picture, she said, I've got a picture of Justin. I've got to find it 
it was hanging in our house before we moved. And I know I've got it boxed away with our kids' pictures because she said, I can remember right where it hung in that hallway. And she said, I'm going to give it to you. Well, last night at Revival, she brought that picture and she gave it to me. And uh, so when I got the picture, I, I took a snap of it. And uh, I sent it to Justin because I couldn't wait to get there with it for him to see it. And uh, there he was, just a little old boy, wearing that little cowboy hat and wearing them cowboy boots. And, and they took that picture of him because, see, Becky and Chuck had bought him those boots and that cowboy hat. Well, now all these years later, here's Stetson wearing that cowboy hat. And here's where I'm going with this. When I sent Justin that picture on his phone last night, Stetson sitting in his lap, and it popped up on his phone, and Justin held the phone up and said, Stetson, look, and he said, that's me. <laughs> and he said, no, Stetson, that's me, that's your daddy. He said, no, my hat. <laughs> Oh, what I'm trying to tell you is tonight, when you sit down, oh, glory to God, this is good. When you sit down at the table that He prepares for you. You see, the enemy wants to prepare a table for you. Who are you letting sit at the table with you? But when you come to the table that He prepares for you and sit down with Him, the reason why fully God can sit at that table and look at fully man is because when he sees me, he sees a reflection of him. Oh, glory to God. When God sees you sitting at the table, he don't see that wretched sinner, that lost man, that man that was created in the very essence of sin, that man that lives in a defiled temple. No! He sees the image of himself. Glory be to God. So when you approach the throne of God and you sit at the table, you're part of the family. Preacher, I don't look like part of the family. Oh, you're in there. You're in there. Let me tell you, as I close, got that picture last night, and we all are saying now, you see, Berkeley hit the terrible twos, and she's four, and she's still in the terrible two. I don't know when it's going to end. And once in a while, we'll all say, I even heard Mima say it this past week. She said, Berkeley, where did you come from? But last night when I got that picture and I looked in those eyes of Justin and around that little nose, I wish I'd have brought a copy of that picture. I said to myself, there is where you come from. So when I sit down at this table and God looks at me and all of me and no doubt thanks to himself, where did you come from when he looks deep into me through the humanity of who he is he sees the image of himself and he declares you are mine you're mine you're mine if you're able stand to your feet tonight and I just want you to thank him for just a moment and then as brother Chris is coming and making his way I want you just to spend a moment thanking him tonight for the invitation to the table. <laughs> and I'm able to come and sit down at the table with my Savior tonight. And I'm able to be in the breath of Almighty God and not be struck and dead tonight because of the favor of God upon my life when I didn't deserve it, when I was even being questioned, where did you come from? God said, I see a reflection of me in Him. And tonight, God, I declare your goodness over us, the body of Christ, and we celebrate your faithfulness in this house. In the name of Jesus, I say thank you, Lord. The good news is if you don't know him tonight, in this room or either viewing on our church, all you have to do is say, Father, recognize me. 
Father, remember me. And when he cast his eyes upon you, he hit me today. That guy hanging on the cross, he said something. Remember me. I'd never seen it in that analogy before. But when he said that, remember me, oh God said, hold on. He don't look the same. He's marred by the things of this world. But wait a minute. I remember him. I created him. Though he has defiled this temple, I see him and I see me. Let's worship Him tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Wow. It's just amazing how God works in the midst of things. As the pastor was just talking about Jesus hanging on the cross, and that one hanging next to Him said, Remember me when you enter in. And what did he tell him? You'll be with me this day. I had that very conversation talking about that earlier today, this morning, with my cousin. And she doesn't know the Lord, but as we, me and her brother were talking with her, we were just encouraging. So it just amazes me how God works through. And here tonight as I was listening to the pastor speak, I didn't know what I was going to have tonight when I got here. And as I was just talking to the Lord earlier, and I sat down and and that word, take my yoke, come to me. So I went and found the scripture. We all know the, the verse that comes before it. In Matthew eleven. But I don't want to focus on twenty eight. I wanna I wanna focus on twenty nine. I just I, I wanna read this and then we're gonna pray it. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, take my yoke upon you and listen to these words and learn yes. of me. Yes. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And this is where it begin to hit home. And ye shall find rest yes. unto your souls. Thank you, Lord. For my yoke is easy yes. and my burden is light. Father, I just praise you right now. As I read this word, I'm going to pray this word. God, I can learn of you and I can find rest for me and you. And Lord, that yoke, the representation of it, we go back and God is in in history, the yokes were placed upon the necks of the oxen of, of these animals used to toil, to break the land, oh God. That yoke was about control, and Lord, you're not desiring to control us. That's why you said we can take your yoke, God, because it's light. It's more about obedience, because in time, Lord, after that yoke had been bore by those animals, you could take it off, and they knew what they were supposed to do, God. But that isn't exactly how you're working. And and this word reminds me of that, that yoke being light. There's just enough to keep us in remembrance of you. To keep us reminded of of the submission it takes to humble. You said you were meek and lowly. We should be that. And when we are, Lord, that, that yoke is so much lighter. It's yours and that burden is light. God, we only weigh ourselves down, but by the blood of Jesus tonight, we can be free. We can be free by the blood of Jesus tonight. Whether we've been serving you for years or or that one that doesn't even know you, we can still be made free. Lord, help us tonight, I pray. Thank you for your love, your grace. Your mercy, and that one that's been sticking to me, your mercy endures forever, Father. Thank you, Lord. I praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And and you can come on, Jack. Hey, 
I know you were getting ready to get started. But I want to remind you and just encourage you. You know, we go through those highs and lows sometimes. Let's, let's get back into this on Wednesday night. It, I know it's been suffering a little bit over the last few weeks, but I want to encourage you. Seek God for that verse. And then let's la- allow him to renew us because this is a time of being intimate. Yes. Even though it's publicly, it's a time for us to be intimate with him. Come on, Brother Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, dear Heavenly Father. I'm going to read my verse first, then I'm going to pray it. It's Psalm 63, 1. It says, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in this dry, parched land where there is no water. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, I earnestly seek you, dear Heavenly Father. I love our relationship and can't wait to hear them words well done, my good and faithful servant. Come on in, and then I will get to praise you all day long. Just want to feel your breath. Thank you, Father, for my hope in you. Oh, I love you, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for everything you say, done, and do for me. I give you all honor, praise, and glory for it all. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oh, I love you. been thinking about what I wanted to say to our congregation and uh, first of all I want to tell you thank you for your prayers and your thoughts your cards and your gifts and uh, it means so much and uh, lesson tonight it's thought of the song come and dine the master call come and dine let us feast at Jesus' table all the time. And then I thought about the bridge between God and Jesus. And so we could sit because if we didn't have the bridge, we couldn't sit. And uh, so there's been two times in my life and one was in the hospital when the Lord woke me in my spirit in the middle of the night. First time I was actually having a heated conversation with, at another church and we were at a sweetheart banquet at the um, steakhouse in um, Smithfield. What's it named? A cabin, log cabin. And me and a fellow, fe- the fellow built this building, John Gibson. And John and I got into a, a conversation, and of course it, it flowed to where everybody listened. <laughs> Didn't mean for it to be that way. And John's opinion was that, that we could be Christ. And I said, no. You can be Christ-like, but you can't be Christ. And I, and I still stand by that today. And uh, But he kept trying to argue. It. And uh, so that night, I was awakened in my spirit and said, go to Philippians. Never been in Philippians. And if you read, I think it's in the fourth chapter, it says in there, if you will strive to be like me, then that's where I want you to be. You can't be any further than that. 
but all you can do is strive to be like me, and that's where I want you. And the other time was in the hospital, and this was about the third night, and my, I was awakened and I couldn't sleep. I had my Bible, my devotion book right there on that tray that won't roll and work. If you've ever been in the hospital, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Aggravating. That's a sanctification tester right there, brother. But uh, so uh, the Lord woke me up, and my wife was over there on the on the bench, and, uh, and I was doing my devotion. And uh, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, this is the verse I'm going to give you, and I'm fixing to give it to you. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are the plans for good and not disaster to give you a future and a hope. And I, I, I had her write that when she woke up on the card, and I've been carrying it with me ever since. And uh, um, I had another message um, coming home, and I'll be brief, and I'm sorry. But you know, when you're in the middle of the night and you're going to Rex Hospital, there's a lot of things that run through your mind, especially when you don't know what's wrong. And uh, you pull up, you get there, and then they issue you in, and then they turn around and tell you there ain't nothing wrong with you. Well, <laughs> they say, well, I, last time I checked coming up the road, I went crazy. There's something going on. And uh, But uh, so coming back home, I got emotional after they had released me. And we're riding through 40 on Highway 42. I used to do a lot of work down that highway. My wife says, what's wrong? I said, I didn't know whether I'd ever see this coming back through here again. But he's let me see it one more time. And I know he has a mission for me. And I, I'm going to do everything I can in my heart. And I'm going to serve this church. And I'm going to serve our pastor. I love you people more than you'll ever know. But there is a verse I want to stick in Luke 10, the last part of that verse. Rejoice because your name is registered as a citizen of heaven. So if you're not registered tonight, believe me, when I walked through that door four weeks ago and the feelings that I was feeling, I didn't have any idea what was going to go on in my heart. And I'm telling you, if I hadn't had Jesus and been in his hand, I wouldn't be standing before you tonight. So please, please, I beg you, register your name in heaven. I love you all. I give you thanks for you have done wonderful and mighty things among us we have seen your hand of mercy your hand of grace your hand of healing <laughs> Lord we thank you for the good news that our sisters coming home and we thank you father also for Noah the 17 year old that you touch Lord and healing has started in his body. And Lord, the doctors can't believe that all of a sudden, there was a suddenly, Lord, 17 years old, a suddenly, God. And Lord, we're asking that also for little Justin. We're asking, Lord, that you would complete the work that you have started in his life and in the life of Noah. And those that, Lord, need a touch, a physical touch among us. You, oh God. <laughs> I'm just going to begin to thank you for what you've done, for what you're doing, for what you're about to do. You're a God of miracles. You're a God of wonder. You're a God almighty. We sense your awesomeness and your presence. We humble ourselves before you, oh God that you would invite me, that you would invite us to the table. Lord, the table of grace, the table of acceptance, the table of healing, the table of deliverance. Oh, glory to you, oh Lord, our God. 
What an invitation you have given us. The table of forgiveness. The table of love. Of acceptance. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. I just praise you and I thank you for the invitation to sit by the master. To sit with the ruler and the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise be unto your name, O oh Lord. Lord, we feel just humble before your presence tonight. Knowing that we have hope. Our prayer, Lord, a prayer of hope. Lord, we maintain, I maintain hope. And that hope is in you. I hold and we hold on to that assurance that what we pray for, according to your word, has already been accomplished through Jesus Christ, your son. Your words of promise, no good thing, Lord, do you withhold, Psalm 84 and 11. No good thing does he withhold from those that walk uprightly. We wait and I wait upon you for, Lord, that good thing that you will not withhold. As David prayed in Psalm 18 and 1, we also declare, I love you. You are the Lord of my strength. You are the rock. You are the fortress. Yes. You are the deliverer. What an invitation to sit at your table. Yes. My God and our God, our rock, in whom we take refuge, our shield and our horn and our salvation, there is hope. My hope and our hope is in you. We thank you, Lord, for we fear not. As Isaiah 41 and 10 says, we speak and we pray and we declare that we fear not. For I, the Lord, your God, is with you. We are not dismayed, for you are God. You will strengthen us, you will strengthen the yea, will help us. Yea, and withhold us, uphold us, and you uphold us with your right hand. That is the strong, mighty hand of the King of glory. Heal us, O oh Lord. Heal those that need healing today. Help us to believe and stand assured that you want to heal, you want to save, you want to deliver. Heal me, O oh Lord, as Jeremiah 17 and 14 speaks. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my God. Thou art the one that I praise. You are the one that we believe and hope in, Lord. Thank you for the miracles, Lord, in the body of Christ today. Show yourself, O God, in your glory and in your splendor. As we stand in awe, understanding and knowing that we, oh God, don't deserve anything good. But it pleases you, oh God, to give good gifts. And it pleases you to heal. And it pleases you to strengthen. And it pleases you to save. <laughs> we love you, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. My heart has been really heavy today ever since I got the news of Justin. I can't imagine what his mother is going through. When she said today she almost lost her son, but she also saw a miracle because God turned it around. 
and she's still believing that her Justin is going to have a testimony. Oh, Jesus. And I kept thinking, grace, mercy, and love. And this scripture, 2 John 1 and 3 says, Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ. The Father's Son will be with us in truth and love. I know tonight that he can give Brittany, not only Brittany, but any of us that are going through anything in our life, he can give us mercy, peace, oh, and the greatest love that we could ever, ever comprehend. Oh, Jesus, I thank you tonight, Lord. Oh, for your mercy, Lord. Oh, even when we don't deserve mercy, God, you give us mercy, Lord Jesus. Oh, dear Lord, we thank you for a peace, Lord, when we're going through things that we don't understand, we can't comprehend it, God, but your peace can be so real, Lord. And most of all, God, we thank you for your love, Lord, no greater love than the love that you have for us, Lord. You took those stripes for us, Lord, and we thank you for that deep, deep love. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. back and say something when I said earlier that things had been a little on the low. I didn't mean that in a harmful way. I want you to understand that tonight. I just know that we, we're we on our mountaintops sometimes and then we get down in our valleys, but that's why I wanted to encourage you. Let's move forward in this. I'm reminded by our sister leads praise and worship. She reminds us that we worship the Lord when we sing unto Him. And that is what we do here on that personal level. And I believe it as he draws us nearer, this is our step of drawing nearer to him as well. So I'm going to ask you to stand as we dismiss the service tonight. And I just want to say thank you for being my family. I want to be open with you tonight on my life for just a moment before we dismiss. It's been hard. I know it's been a little over a month now, but the last couple of weeks have been really tough, and I want to say this, and hopefully maybe this will encourage you as it encourages me tonight. I know that as, as Cliff stood up here, he could not have gone through what he had gone through without a relationship with Jesus, and I'm going to be, I've said this to a few, I've said this to others out as I've had a chance to talk, I would even hate to think of what I would be, what kind of shape I'd be in if I did not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's carried me. I've been in that parched land in the last couple weeks and sometimes I've been angry with myself. But I, I just, I remember yesterday as I I just cried out to God. I said, We're, I know you're there, but I need you now. I need you now. I really need you. I, tell, I, I just was plain, and this is what we can do. God, I, I can't fight this battle alone. And we don't have to. We don't have to. So, But I'm thankful those times only come in moments now. <laughs> so much as others. But I want to say thank you because I know so many, if not all in here, have, been, have prayed for me and my family. Thank you so much. And, Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are so grateful for Abba Father. Lord, we're not just a, a name. We're your child, oh Lord. And as I was reminded today, I am a citizen of heaven. 
But again, I, I pray for those who may not be where they need, need to be. Maybe there's one who's not made that decision and they're listening or possibly even sitting in this room right now. God, I pray that they will make that decision as you draw them. We're reminded there's no way to get to the Father except through Christ Jesus. So we call out upon that name of Jesus tonight. Hallelujah, because he's ready, he's listening, he's waiting. And Lord, I just again am grateful for my relationship with you. I'm grateful that I can call upon you. And you hear me. And not only do you hear me, but you come in. I may not always feel it, but you're always there. And you know when I need you the most. And I thank you for that, being able to stand on that. I thank you for your mercy. And we give you glory and honor and praise tonight. Go with us to the next few days until we come back together again. Lord, we praise you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah.